You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocate Weekly Bulletin. We're hoping you're enjoying the silly season. The heat is finally upon us. Things are looking up after a fucking ordinary year for a lot of you. Queensland, of course, has remained the same. How are you going, Errol? I'm all right, mate. Good to be up in here in Queensland. You know, once again, we're setting the example of um, how you remain open to parts of the country and keep this virus at bay. It could be a combination of things, whether it be our outdoor lifestyles, our love to wash our hands and just, you know, Mm. performing basic hygiene. Yeah, these hoity-toity types from Sydney and Melbourne are always taking shots at us, but things have been pretty good up here for the last couple of years. And they're all forgetting, of course, the one thing we learned early on in this pandemic is that the virus hates the heat. And look, if they want to keep on carrying on and, you know, heaping all this criticism upon the great state of Queensland, we'll just have to upset them by returning Scott Morrison to power in May. How are they like it then? <laughs> that would teach him a real lesson. Which leads us into our next story about the Prime Minister who said that if he has to choose, he'll take Scotty from marketing over the liar from the Shire. Not a lot decision to make for the marketing man himself, Scott Morrison. After his relentless attempts to play politics at every opportunity and market himself as the most relatable bloke in the country for the last few years, the PM has been hit with another tag, one that is even less endearing than Scotty from marketing. Yes, it is the liar from the Shire. Yeah, the nickname stuck at the back end of last week after he claimed that he never told a lie in public office, which, you know, as a politician, they all have. I mean, you know, it just goes without saying. Of course, his fabrications of the truth were pointed out. And then, you know, he was forced to choose between his new nickname and his old one. He understandably turned down the liar one. Yeah. I think he spoke with you, didn't he, Clancy? And he said he hates that nickname, Scotty, from marketing because it makes him look like a fuckwit that tries to distract Australians from his fuck-ups by getting photographed with athletes and much more important leaders from the powerful English-speaking nations. And then he said, but yes, I would prefer that nickname over the nickname that makes me look like a fuckwit that tries to hide my fuck-ups by lying through my bleached Hillsong teeth. Interesting Mm. insight there. Here in town, and a heavily leveraged owner of a shitbox apartment has revealed that he's not that keen on joining the great resignation. No, Brad Day, he's an area sales manager in our town's fabled French Quarter. He says he wishes he could just quit his job and see what happens. After reading plenty of articles about this new trend, which is seeing people leave their employment and look for better work-life balance, Brad said that news just made him sad. Not for him. Yes, with a whopping mortgage repayment due at the end of every month, the local 30-something said he doesn't reckon he'll be aimlessly resigning until he retires, which will probably be at the age of 75 if things keep going the way they do. And then there were a couple comments on that article Mm. too with all these people saying that, you know, oh, well, you know, you, you don't quit your job until you've got another one to go to but if you're that heavily leveraged I mean it's it's a very easy thing to say if you're just Mm. you know a lowly renter but if you've got the pressure of of paying you know six six to seven thousand dollars a month in mortgage repayments sometimes you just don't want to rock the boat yeah yeah can't afford a couple of weeks here and there uh, looking for job interviews and all that sort of stuff just needs parents who work harder I reckon yep. now some more news from Batuta a local woman has been finally able to have a good cry after holding off for 24 hours since her lash extensions yes Elise Holland from up there in Batuta Heights explained the cost of having long thick beautiful eyelashes put on her face artificial ones of course like never being able to rub her eyes again and no crying for the first 24 for hours after a retouch. Very frustrating apparently. Holding it all in for the day-long grace period it takes for the lash glue to dry. Which in this case wasn't ideal. Particularly when Elise discovered that her ex-partner Savannah had just gone and got a new girlfriend. Which she decided to plaster all over her Instagram story. With a few hours to go Elise told us she just had to hold it together until the clock ticked over she was able to have a good cry. But just a bit of a sidebar here. I always thought that these lash extensions were taken from dead horses. No, they get they, they buy them from funeral parlours. Oh, right. Just scalp yeah, them right yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you, right. you think we'd be able to make them you know, artificially soon. It's a donor organ We can put a man on the moon, but we can't make fake eyelashes. Mm. It's, a, it's an organ donor situation, I believe. Certainly it, something to This be is why into. people hate scientists. Finishing up with another story of courtship and a local bloke has attempted one last effort to pull by casually flashing his crypto portfolio in the middle of a nightclub dance floor. 
Uh, Matthew Fitzgerald Gibbs, another double-barreled surname from uh, another crypto investor in this town. Apparently, this Matthew fella resorted to some pretty desperate tactics in the dating arena over this past weekend. After attempts at conversing with strangers went largely ignored and the clock ticking closer and closer to lights on, Matty apparently decided to pull out his crypto wallet to wow some potential suitors. Spotting a bored and tired fellow clubber leaning against the wall in the corner, instead of just leaving her at peace until she found out where her friends were, Matt decided to start telling her about the benefits of Ethereum and how he got in when it was 300 bucks, and of course gave her a few unintentional flashes of his crypto holdings as well. Yeah, I think he also told her to invest in some shitcoin he'd heard mm. of that was about to moon and was later seen trying to grab a dart off some bloke in the smoking yeah. area. So it see, didn't work out for Matt. Every time I see a person getting flogged out the front of a pub or, or a club by the bouncers, you know, being choked into unconsciousness around the side, I try to imagine it's someone like Matthew. Mm. And I just keep walking. That is a, quite a satisfying visual, I guess, Errol. Mm. And we will leave that with the listeners. Hope they can enjoy it too. And we'll be back again next week. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Au revoir.